<laughs> well, look at this, Chris. I finally get to operate the clapper board. I don't think we need a director or a producer or an editor or a camera person or a sound person. We can do it all on our own now. Come on, take it away. Now, because we can't go to our real lab, I thought we'd do the next best thing and bring the lab into the house. In fact, into Zahn's kitchen, which is where we are now. And you know what this means, Zahn? I certainly do, Chris. It means that I can finally eat in the lab because the lab is my kitchen. And I've got all kinds of cool science experiments planned. We're going to try all the flavours of ice cream. We're going to have a ketchup eating competition. And thank you, Mini Zahn. We are going to work out what the perfect amount of cheese is to cook the perfect lasagna. Zond put the cheese down. In fact, my primary rule about the lab still stands. No eating in the lab, but we also now have a new rule. No eating in your kitchen. What? That's right. Instead of doing our normal don't try this at home experiments, we're going to be doing some do try this at home experiments right here in Zond's kitchen. Woohoo! We've rigged my kitchen with every gadget you can think of! We're gonna get up, close and personal! I am literally calling the shots. Look at this. Action! Now, today's experiment is all about bones. Just like Billy Bones here, your bodies are full of bones. But do you know how many? Is it A, 350? B, 270? Or C, 206? Well, the answer is B and C. And that's because when you're born, you've got loads of bones, about 270. But as you grow up and turn into an adult, some of those bones fuse together, and so you end up with fewer, around 206. Nazan, did you know that the proper name for the jawbone is the mandible? Yes, yes, I did know that, Chris. Did you know that, in fact, almost half your bones are found in your hands and in your feet? Yes, I did know that. Did you know that the largest bone in the human body is the femur, which is the bone right here inside your thigh? I did know that, Chris. Did you know that inside your femur and some of your other long bones is bone marrow, the stuff that makes some of your blood cells? Yes, of course I knew that. Did you know that the smallest bone in your body is the stapes, one of the ossicles, the small bones inside your ear that help transmit sounds from your eardrum into your brain? You might be wondering why you've got all these bones and what they're doing. Well, your skeleton has several jobs. For a start, it protects your organs, which are pretty delicate and mushy, so your brain is safer inside your skull. But as well as that, your skeleton acts almost like internal scaffolding, so that you can attach ligaments, muscles and tendons, and that's what allows you to move. So if you didn't have bones, you'd just be a blob. You might think that sounds fun, being a blob, but actually it wouldn't be very useful at all. Now, there are animals that lack bones that are a bit blobby, but all of the animals that we think of as having those hard bones are what we call vertebrates. And vertebrates is a huge group of animals. It's all the sort of main ones you think of. It's fish, it's birds, uh, it's... What are some other vertebrates on? Uh, fish, birds, amphibians. Uh, reptiles, amphibians, and, of course, mammals, like human beings, like whales. Squirrels. Squirrels, right. Uh, uh, elephants. Squirrels. Zebras. Don't forget the squirrels, Chris. Uh, wildebeest, armadillos. Squirrels. Yes, squirrels. Why, why do you keep bringing up squirrels? What it... Because my best friend is a squirrel. Is he? Yes. That one's called President Dalton. Thanks for dropping in. Well, it is nice to see uh, President Dalton there. There are, of course, those other blobby animals I talked about. So there's a big group of animals we call invertebrates that don't have an internal bony skeleton. And those are animals like jellyfish. Snails. Sea anemones, right? Snails. Uh, squid. Snails. Why do you keep bringing up snails? What if you've got a best friend who's a snail as well? Yes. What's its name, then? Shelley. <laughs> anyway, 
The animals that we're interested in today are not the invertebrates, they are the vertebrates, specifically birds. And what we need for today's experiment is, in fact, some bird bones. Wait, I thought I said no eating in the lab. Well, you did say that, Chris, but you also told me you needed some bird bones. And so, I've been working hard on these leftovers to give us a supply for today's experiment. Hmm, well, I suppose I do need some bird bones. <laughs> now, take a look at these chicken bones. I've got a special lens on my camera here. It means we can get up close. Don't forget to hit record. There we go. So, if I, if I zoom in, if I get up really close here. So what, what can you see, Zand? Once you get up close, you see that the bone is not entirely smooth. In, in fact, it's a sort of network, it's a kind of matrix of strands of different proteins and chemicals. So bones have got lots and lots of different chemicals in them, but there are two really important ones. One is a protein called collagen, and it's this protein that allows even your strongest bones to have a little bit of flexibility. If I try and bend this chicken bone, it doesn't bend much, but it does flex a little bit. But the other thing, is calcium. There are two types of calcium in bone. There's calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate. The thing that makes all our bones really hard, a bit like stone, is those calcium-based minerals. Are you sure? Yeah, of course I'm sure. But, but how do you know? Well, I learned it, I guess, at medical school. I read it in a book. We had lectures on it. You, you know this. But do you really know, Chris? Well, yes, you can go and look it up in any medical textbook, any journal. You could go and ask orthopaedic surgeons. You could ask rheumatologists. They'd all tell you the same things, are But do you know, Chris? Are you really sure? Well, yeah. I mean, what do you want me to do? Remove all the calcium from a bone and prove to you that what's left is bendy? Exactly, and you're gonna do it too. We're gonna remove the calcium from a bone and make bendy bones in today's Do Try This experiment. You're going to need one jar, one pair of tongs, these are for handling the bone, as the vinegar can sting your fingers. One chicken bone, and you don't actually have to use a chicken bone. Any bone will do. Zand is modelling there a chicken tibia, a drumstick bone. Now, the drumstick on the chicken would be the calf on you. And no problem if you don't eat chicken. We're going to do the experiment too, so you can see what happens. And finally, you need some distilled vinegar. Ouch brand vinegar. OK, so the first thing you want to do is remove all the flesh from the bone. So you can gnaw off all the chicken, and if there are any scraps left, you can rinse them or scrub them off under the tap. Son, do you want to have a go at that? I've got a brilliant idea for this, Chris. This is going to be brilliant. I've got a waterproof camera, and I reckon I can get a really good shot in the sink. Here we go. You get the chicken bone, get the water running, and then I can give it a good old scrub in the sink and get all the little bits of chicken off. That's good. Well, there you go, Chris. One clean chicken bone and an excellent bit of directing, if I say so myself. So the next thing you're going to do is put the chicken bone in the jar and then pour the vinegar so it completely covers it. So before it's gone in the jar, I've made sure that I haven't got a bendy chicken bone here, so we can make sure the experiment works. Right, chicken bone in the jar, and then just cover it in vinegar. It's a very big jar, Zand. This is my best jar. But any jar will do. Anything you can fit a bone in. You can put it in a bowl covered in cling film. Anything you've got at home. Don't go and buy anything specially to do this experiment. OK, Chris, one chicken bone in one jar covered in vinegar. What happens now? Well, now we leave the bone in the vinegar in the jar for one week. What? For a week? I've got to wait a whole week to see what happens. That's right. It takes that long for the acid in the vinegar to get rid of all the calcium in the bones. Chris, it must have been a week by now. It has been a week, magically, somehow. OK, Suzanne, get the bone out of the, out of the jar. So I'll give the bone a rinse. OK. Let's see how bendy it is. Wow! 
So I can really bend this bow now. It's completely amazing. So the acetic acid in the vinegar has stripped away most of the calcium minerals from the bone, leaving mainly that protein scaffold, which is quite rubbery and bendy. And that's how we know that calcium is what makes your bones hard. Let's see that again. It's incredible how bendy the bone has become. But what about the collagen, Chris? Well, to show what would happen if your bones didn't have any collagen, I've come up with the... Do try this at home. Bones experiment part two. For this second part of the experiment, you need one more chicken bone, a baking tray, an oven. I've got one of those, it's right here. Get a grown-up to set the oven to uh, 250 degrees Fahrenheit or 130 degrees Celsius or 110 degrees Celsius if the fan is on or gas marker half if you have a gas oven. Basically, a fairly low temperature. And finally, you need oven gloves. What do we do now? So you put your clean bone in the middle of the oven tray and put it in the oven. Best to get an adult to do this. And now we just have to wait for three hours. What? Three hours? Well, I suppose I did have to wait a week for the bendy bone. I can probably manage this. Are we done yet? It is. That's exactly three hours. That was lucky. Get a grown-up to take the bone out of the oven with oven gloves. And remember, never touch anything when it first comes out of the oven. And leave it on the side to cool down for quite a long time to make sure you don't burn yourselves. And then you can pick up the bone and see whether or not you can break it now. It's on. What, you want me to just break it after all that work? That's the whole point. All right, well, here goes. I couldn't break it before, but now, using the power of my thumbs... Oh, wow, that broke really easily. It was extremely easy to break, actually. It made quite a satisfying snap. Cue slow-mo. Wow, that was snap-tastic. The bone broke so easily. Now, what you can see is that the heat in the oven has destroyed the collagen, and so the bone doesn't have any of that bit of flexibility, but it also isn't very strong. So it's still hard. The calcium is still functioning to make it like rock, but because it doesn't have the collagen, it's much, much weaker. It's really interesting, isn't it? You can see the hole in the middle of the bone. That's where the bone marrow used to be.